Thank you, Tim, and uh, good morning, everybody. Helix Resources is exploring for high-grade copper in the Cobar region. We want to be part of that supply chain that is involved in the energy transition and mobile uh, electric vehicles. Next slide, please. Next slide. That picture on the right, that's what high-grade, massive copper sulfide mineralization looks like. That's what we've been drilling for the last five months on our projects at Cambelago and CZ. We've been consistently reporting strong copper intercepts from this ongoing drilling program. Those two key resources are located within a very large strategic land holding in the Cobar region. And that gives us the opportunity to generate new prospects that we bring through and hopefully advance to a resource level. We're in Cobar. It's a prodigiously mineralized terrain. It's got significant uh, processing and mining related infrastructure. So there's opportunities to commercialize all scales of discoveries. And then we're sitting in this very positive copper price environment. That kind of sets the scene for the rest of the discussion. Next slide, please. When I joined Helix in January of this year, I articulated a very clear strategy, cobar, copper, gold, and for the company to be well-funded, to be able to gain a momentum in its exploration activities and then maintain it. And that's, I think, what investors are looking for. So how have we gone so far? Well, since that time, we've drilled about 3,500 meters in a variety of diamond and reverse circulation drilling, a couple of dozen holes across those two advanced prospects. We've also generated a range of re new regional targets and reinforced existing regional targets by completing electromagnetic coverage on the entire um, prospective strike extent. Electromagnetics, that is the key discovery tool for finding copper deposits in the Cobar region. Critically, we've also installed a completely new management team, especially on the exploration side. So no more fly in, fly out from Western Australia. Our exploration team is based in Orange, close to the projects. Next slide, please. So I was um, boasting about the neighborhood that we operate in, and you can see from the map, the basis of my boasts. You can see our Western and Eastern group tenements shown there and around us, high quality neighbors. Glencore producing around 50,000 tons of copper a year from their CSA mine. And notably to the north of our tenements in the East is Eris Resources with their long lived Triton operations, which are occurring to the north on the same prospective trends that we're exploring for there. So a terrific neighborhood a uh, highly mineralized terrain. Next slide, please. Zooming in a little bit now on our particular tenement position, around 1,500 square kilometers that we have here between this Eastern and Western group. And what we've done here is we've identified three main mineralized trends. We've got the Rochford trend on the Western uh, block there. That hosts our Cambelago resource. It's an inferred resource of one and a half million tons at 1.2% copper. And then on the Eastern side, we have the Colorina trend, which hosts our CZ deposit. That's an inferred and indicated resource of 2 million tons at 2% copper and a little bit of gold. And then on the Western margin, we have a much earlier stage uh, trend, uh, which we call the Mariola trend. Now I said that EEM finds copper in Cobar and what I'm and, and one of the major advances that we've made is that the original EEM coverage was only about 20% of the tenure in the area outlined in white on the right hand on the Colorina trend there around CZ. So in March, we flew all of the rest of the prospective trends and that creates a tremendous regional data set on which to base all of the ongoing exploration. Indeed, we like that regional data set so much, it prompted us to apply for more ground as shown on the blue shading on the right-hand uh, tenement block. And also we've done a deal with Alpha HPA to acquire more prospective copper ground to the northeast of CZ. Next slide, please. 
So coming in on the Cambalago or the Rochford trend area, as I said, Cambalago is one of our two advanced resource projects. It's a joint venture with Eris Resources. We have 70%. The two companies are co-funding. We manage it, but there's tremendous collaboration between the two groups in terms of formulating and executing our plans. Now, along the Rochford trend to the north and south of Cambalago, we've generated a number of regional targets which have been reinforced with that regional VTEM. I'll talk shortly about the enhanced prospectivity around Cambalago, but there's also some very significantly anomalous copper intercepts at a prospect we call Biju to the south. And we also are pretty excited about the VTEM anomalism around a little prospect or prospect called Little Boppy uh, to the north as well as a range of other opportunities. But those are the priority areas we'll be working on over the next uh, few months. Next slide, please. So this is a long section view of the Cambalago deposit. It's about 400 meters north south and up until recently extended vertically for about 200 meters. You can see the blue dots there beneath the orange shading. Those are the drill holes that we've put in to the property. And clearly they have pushed the mineralization down at least another 100 meters or so vertically. Now, our very early in the program, hole two, we had a spectacular intercept, that massive cold sulfide um, core that I showed at the, at the start of the presentation, 18 meters at 3.4% copper. That is a massive to semi-massive copper shoot in the middle of the Cambalago zone there. And I think that kind of set expectations with investors thinking that we we're going to get a lot more of that. And, and frankly, interest waned subsequent to that. That intercept put our price up to something like five cents. But I think what people aren't realizing is that the rest of the holes, they all hit strong, potentially economic copper mineralization, six meters at 1.6, 10 meters at 1.6. These are all grades consistent with Cambalago. And indeed, if you look at the reserve grade of Eris's underground, very deep underground trip mine, their reserve grade is 1.4% copper. And if you look at the reserve grade of their open pit operation, 0.9%. So our intercepts here are clearly in the zone and we are going to continue to drill here. Next one, I'm particularly interested in those, um, that high grade shoot. Next slide, please. I talked about the VTEM highlighting regional potential. And on this color image, you can see those hotspots. Those are the more conductive areas highlighted by the VTEM. The lime green is the Cambalago resource. And you can see that we've identified EM anomalism to the south, to the north, and to the northeast. So we are planning to come back into this area with a drill rig, hopefully before Christmas, after we've done some surface EM work to better define those broader anomalies to target for drilling. Next slide, please. So now we're moving to the eastern block of tenements, the Colorina trend, the trend that sits south of Eris's operations. We have our CZ copper deposit in the lower third of the tenement area there, and we have a range of regional targets over that 65 kilometer extent. We've identified several that we want to get working on sooner, such as the Quandra area to the north, and the five ways to the south. Next slide, please. This is a plan view of the CZ deposit, highlighting some of the historic drill intercepts. And you can see it's a genuine high-grade copper sulfide resource. We've got 14 meters of 4% copper, 12 meters of 5% copper, 10 at 3.7, trending to the southeast over around about 800 meter strike extent. You can also see some of the recent holes that we've drilled and announced, shallow RC holes. We've got good results such as seven meters at 2.6 within a broad lower grade 0.9% uh, envelope. And we've done that and over hundred meters and it's still open to the uh, east and it's a new zone. So we're very excited about being able to follow up that zone. Now, if you go to the next slide, please, one of the challenges that we've had here is that we're not being constrained by previous geological models. We've actually found that there's a large proportion of drill holes that have never been geologically logged and probably undersampled. So there's a huge gap in the data that we're dealing with. That also creates a really exciting opportunity. 
And so we're aiming to rig at what we can see in terms of geophysical data and geological data. And we are successfully hitting massive sulfides and the new oxide zones. New, uh, next slide, please. In terms of regional work at Colorino, the pink area shows areas that we have approval to drill August soil holes to really define new uh, prospects and reinforce targets. And as I said earlier, we've made um, new tenement acquisitions to the southeast to capture all the potential around that five ways target. And we've also tidied up an existing joint venture relationship with Alpha HPA uh, in the northeast. Next slide, please. So timeline in terms of our activities over the next six months, we run our activities in two streams. We focus on our advanced targets and defining um, new targets around the resources, but also very importantly, a very active regional program to generate new targets to advance to resource work. Next slide. Quick corporate snapshot, our share price has been around about 1.6 to 1.8 cents, gives us a market cap of 20 to $22 million. Our share register, major shareholders, Yandel Investments at around 4%, but notice the open nature of the register, top 20 hold less than 30. Now our share price graph, I think is interesting. I think from the start of the year, it shows support and interest in the new exploration strategy that we're executing. And then you see the share price explode on the back of that massive copper sulfide intercept. And then even though we were still banging out very good copper results at both Cambelago and CZ, obviously investor interest is waning. I've got to fix that to my job. Next slide. Just to wrap it all up, what I'd like you to take away from this presentation is that this is a really interesting Australian copper exploration story. And with a company that is well-funded, we have got existing copper resources and we're working to grow those resources. And we have delivered consistent high grade intercepts from our work already. We're working regionally to bring up new prospects. We've got a new team. We're absolutely focused on that Cobar, looking for copper gold area. And this is all in this wonderful, strong copper price environment. Thanks very much. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I know there's an analyst online here who knows this space. He's got a question. Um, are you most likely to end up with multiple small mine pods or a much bigger single site copper discovery to get um, a viable copper project? Interesting question. Thank you. Um, I think we're open to both. And the reason that I say that is if you look at the evolution of the deposits that are being mined to the north of us, they started as quite modest resources and reserves, and they've grown through ongoing drilling, understanding the geology in the case of Triton, for example, to become very significant copper deposits in their own right. Um, so the idea is to always be advancing prospects and a range of resources to build up the overall copper inventory, but with good geology and downhole geophysics to keep on going down. If you look at the evolution, for example, of Triton, you can see that there were lots of changes and then suddenly a new zone was discovered. So um, uh, th there is potential for large deposits, but also we're, um, we're alive and well positioned to more modest size deposits as well. And there's another question here. Uh, new shallow high grade oxide copper zone has uh, recently been intersected at CZ. Um, what have the results told you about the geology around CZ and how optimistic are you about extending this zone? Look, I think we've got a great chance of extending that zone. As I said, there's been, a, for some reason, there's been a lot of drill holes that were not logged and were undersampled. And so some of the mineralization styles were not recognized in those historic holes. So there's a big job for us to do, which does open up the potential to be able to reconfigure the geology. Um, I, we, I'm not quite answering the question, but we need to do that geological work to really get a solid geological model. There's clearly a lot of high grade copper there and we need to understand it. And that new oxide zone does open up new opportunities for us and we are following them up. And, and your shareholders will soon be voting on the Alpha deal. How does the Homeville Nickel, um, is it copper? What's, what's that resort? Um, resource you're talking about there with Homeville and how does that fit into your copper strategy? 
Uh, look, I've had a lot of questions on this. The Homeville resource is a nickel cobalt laterite resource. It's associated with what are called ultramafic rocks around that site. We had a giant, and I've had questions and concern from shareholders saying, you're losing focus, you're being distracted. I can assure you we're not. We, we had a joint venture with Alpha. There was a lot of complicated overriding and conflicting rights. We've cleaned all of that up. We like their ground for the copper opportunities. And at the same time, we're now custodians. Or we, own, we will own that resource, 17 million tonnes at 0.9 uh, nickel and 0 0.06 cobalt. And what's interesting about it is we're looking to attract independent funding to it. And let's see what sort of an opportunity it creates for our shareholders. We have high grade cobalt and nickel intercepts to the north along strike from that resource. The resource has very benign metallurgy. We're not talking necessarily about big capex numbers if, with that kind of metallurgy. And uh, I think it presents a really interesting opportunity. And I'll just make one co more comment on that is that there was a not even a resource, there was a prospect 40 kilometers away that was purchased for $2.4 million cash and strip. And that was a nickel cobalt prospect. And here we have a resource with good upside. So I think there's value there, but as a side project to draw that value out.